Hello, God bless each and every one of you. It is 1010, and I am in the parking lot in Capperman. I've shared and witnessed with a uh, few people in here, I believe three people that I'm aware of, and uh, one guy was from Pennsylvania or Philadelphia or something like that. But uh, anyhow, you guys, <laughs> even though you got people here sightseeing, taking their photos, or you know, they can say they've been here, they, you know, they don't realize we're in the days of evil. And it's because of what scripture says, the world that's blinded them. That's why it says not many are called. We know we're in the last days. We know perfectly well we are. Knowing that, you know, our eyes have been opened, predestined, chosen for this time. Um, we should be... Um, steadfast, ready, waiting for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This guy in the parking lot gave me a piece of a, of a uh, tile or whatever, and he goes, "Yeah, you know, he doesn't realize a lot of this stuff. If you look at it, if you know what you're looking at, see those lines in it right there, like that." These things were made, I don't know how long ago, but they're not that old as everybody thinks they are when they're out there picking them up. And souvenirs, you know? I mean, I didn't want to tell them. I just tried to witness with them and tell them what time it is. All these things are going to be dissolved. You know, but anyhow, when I was sharing with them, he didn't have time. He had to hurry it up and get back on the bus to leave. Not everybody, you guys, is aware, you know, they, like he said, we've been in the last days ever since Jesus Christ uh, was here. He doesn't realize that um, we're in the days of evil now. There's a lot of people that can't see it because the world chokes it out. It's hidden from them. We see it. We see all the signs and everything. Um, these people pulling up in the buses, man, it's like I said, they made merchandise of them. When I was coming out, I told you I was going to stop by that place and get me a a drink, something cold to drink. Um, the first guy that I started talking to in there, you know, he was all right for a moment. Then it was like something came over him and he, you know, all of a sudden became like, didn't want to talk to me no more. He just turned and walked away just dead. And then I tried witnessing with this other kid in there. They were selling, he was stocking the coolers with beer, alcohol. And, this is, and when you pull in here, it says this is a holy site. You know, and they're selling alcohol. Come on, man. You know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to put this together. Alcohol, spirits, the people walking in, just like monks. Uh, they, you know, far, far from it, you guys. Far from it. This is all going to be destroyed. We see. Thank the Lord for that, okay? Godliness, you guys, is great gain. I'm going to start reading here from chapter 6, 1 Timothy. 6, verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain that we will carry nothing out. Having food and remnant, let us be therefore content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. They're not teaching this in the churches today. Which drown men in destruction and perdition. And the churches even. You know, people in the pulpit. You've seen where you can go online and get your license for being a minister in the churches today. You don't even have to go into a classroom to study anything. It's crazy, but this is the time we're in. Most people don't know it, they don't care. As long as they're getting what they want, hearing what they want. Okay? For the love of money is the root of all evil. Okay? While some covered it after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, 
faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called. You guys, some people have been saying, you know, why have my eyes been open? Why am I seeing this? I, they think I'm part of the, you're part of the 144, all that. Don't even go there. There's no reason. Your answers are there. We're called to be soldiers. We're called to be bold. You know, bold as we ought to be. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. That's why we were chosen. We weren't chosen to sit there and guess at anything. And God will reveal everything in its time. Until then, when I started seeing what I've seen, let me tell you something. I was offered a lot of high-paying jobs. I immediately, uh, well, I lived in my shop for a couple of years trying to work and keep things going. It just increasingly got worse. I lived in my shop, slept in there. And uh, I was offered high-paying jobs, man. If they, they said we spoke less about Christ. And uh, I refused. I said that'll never happen. And uh, I eventually ended up packing. What I sold everything that I had that I could sell. I kept enough tools in my truck to where I could hopefully get work. And I went around to all the churches and I started going across the nation. And I said, I'm gonna start warning people, man, because I can't be the only one. Man, going to the churches was one of the biggest disappointments I've ever experienced because none of them was believing or receiving what I was saying. That was one of the most difficult times that I had to go through. And they're still uh, this way about it. They're not, you don't see them coming out speaking up, talking to nobody. Even here in Israel, they're not doing it. Just talk to a bus driver, he knows this. They're not doing it, they're not speaking out. You know, they think that this could go on and on and on. They don't know what's going on. Okay, you guys, listen, we're here. We're, this is why our, the scales were lifted off of our eyes. To, to do what we do, we go out and we warn people. He didn't reveal to us so we could just sit back and do nothing. You know, I had people in the church just say, man, that was a blessing from God and you didn't know it. I said, you didn't hear what I said. They heard the money part, but they didn't hear the part where they said they didn't want me to speak less. They were trying to give me a job that would have required me to probably travel, working unlimited hours, not having time to do any of the things that I've done over these past five years. Can you imagine working a job that would have been salary? You know, yeah, paid good yearly money, but salary, and then you're traveling everywhere. You didn't have time to uh, always doing their stuff. Them always calling you. Them always keeping you busy, busy, busy. That's what would have happened. They would have had me running, driving. They would have been driving me instead of me going out there doing what the Lord opened my eyes for, you know? This is why we were predestined and chosen, not to be running around doing what the will of the devil, okay? Yes, you'll have to walk away from this life. You'll have to walk away from it. You'll have to put your faith in the Lord. You'll have to trust in Him to help you, guide you through it. I got through it. I lived in my truck for a long time, three and a half years, and uh, it was very uncomfortable. Yeah, but I got through it, and now here I am in Israel. I didn't come here to be a tourist. I come here to warn people, to show people, to get them to wake up and see the time that we're in. Every day I'm trying to do this. Who knows how far to go? You know, you just keep doing what you're doing. And as far as the 144, you guys, listen, when that happens, it'll happen. There's a time and a place for everything. And they're gonna be chosen just like they're supposed to be chosen. And those that are one, they'll be one, you know? And until then, we warn people, you know? We're chosen, this is a spiritual battle, war that's going on right now. People who are chosen, that are soldiers of Christ, do not entangle themselves with the affairs of this life. You don't do it. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things and before Christ Jesus who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession that thou keep this commandment without spot unrebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ which in his time he shall show who is the blessed and only 
omnipotent, the King of kings, Lord of lords, who only has immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach, unto whom no man has seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. 17. This is 617, 1 Timothy. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. See, you guys, this is where people are at. They're trusting in their riches. They're trusting in... I talked to this one guy in there just now from England, and I said, you know why we're here in this world, right? And he's going, no. You know? And he's here to worship like in the spirit of God. I told him for disobeying God in the garden, eating the forbidden fruit. People want to have knowledge, you know, uh, above all that is of God. You know, they want to be more than. That's why we're here, to know what good and evil is. I'm telling you, these people, they don't know. They no longer know. They only know what they've been told and taught. We know scripture says in the last days this would have happened. This is what's happened. That they do good and they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so called. You guys, I see this here, where we see these the things in the sky, other lights with the rainbow. They say, oh, those are sun dogs. <laughs> you know, and that's what this is right here. It says so-called science, where they're mocking the Most High God. You know, these people have been ruling over everybody here from the beginning, and they don't even know it. You know, when they take these high-paying jobs, a lot of these people, they're going to be puppeted. Why? Because what Scripture says, they chose the things of this world rather than the knowledge of God to follow Him in obedience. They, instead, they chose... Satan's a prince of this place, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. Now, it's 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, or uh, 15 through 21. I'm going to start off up here at 10. Chapter 2, 10 through 24. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. This is what's happening right now, you guys. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to show subverting of the ears. <clears throat> this is why I like just reading the scriptures, you guys. Show, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. This is where we're at today, you guys. And their word will eat as does a canker, of whom Heminus and Pilate, Philate, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundations of God stand as sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the Lord name of Christ depart from iniquity. 
But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing they do gender strife. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, and apt, patient to teach. Okay. And then it goes on here, you guys telling us. Uh, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God, peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Chapter 3. The snow also in the last days, perilous times shall come, and men will be lovers of themselves. You know, that's why I told you about the truth breakers. Okay? False accusers. Truth breakers. We know we got a covenant. Covenant breakers, too. We talk about the covenant breakers. This is the time we're in, you guys. People are, uh... That's why you see the rainbow on their flag. That's why they do it with pride. God's put it in their minds and their hearts to do this. Scripture says there's nothing hidden that won't be uncovered. There's no cloak for their uh, sins no more. They're all being brought out to be seen. Why? Because they're going to be destroyed. All of them. This is what's happening. It's being brought out. At the same time, the devil's coming up against a lot of us, trying to attack us with dreams, perversion. Um, it's spiritual, you guys. It's like it says, we wrestle not with flesh and blood. These are spiritual attacks. Be strong. Know what they are. And remember, through the Lord, we have power over them. And he says, don't rejoice in that, but uh, praise the Father and the Son that we, our names are found in the book of life. Okay? But we do have power over it. They don't have control over us like they do them. That's why when somebody said, well, my eyes have been open and I think this or I think that. Listen, your eyes have been opened to know the truth. And you need to just read what's in the Word of God. Be on the rock. That's our foundation where we need to be. Those that are the 144 will find out soon enough. It's not going to change anything that you uh, stand on the rock. Okay? And tell the time and place. Well, everybody will know what they need to know at the time that they're supposed to know it. Till then, we know who we are, and we know why they don't see, and we know we are to be a light unto a dark world, and we do what we can do with the time that we're here. Okay? <clears throat> a lot of our questions, you guys, we at least know. Praise the Father and the Son for the things that we do know. You know? And don't strive about the things that we don't know. You know, we're not going to know until that time comes. God bless you. I love each and every one of you. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.